we probably don't need more information or more evidence that there's a strong mind-body connection, but here's a study showing even more this important connection between what's going on in your body, specifically your me metabolic health, and what's going on inside your brain, specifically mental health disorders. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. I think this is so important because we focus so much on metabolic health and the importance of metabolic health for preventing type two diabetes and heart disease, maybe even cancer and other related conditions. But one thing maybe we don't focus enough on is the connection between metabolic health and mental health disorders, specifically bipolar disorder, depression, schizophrenia. Although there have been more and more reports of ketogenic diets being beneficial for these mental health conditions. And, and I've done other videos and podcasts and so forth about that. So it is definitely getting more attention. But here was another study that's a little bit different um, that I wanted to bring up. It's called Treating Insulin Resistance with Metformin as a Strategy to Improve Clinical Outcomes in Treatment-Resistant Bipolar Depression a randomized quadruple masked placebo controlled clinical trial published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry uh, led by Dr. Cynthia Kalkin. Now, what I find interesting about this study is they didn't use diet. They didn't use nutrition, exercise, lifestyle interventions. They used a specific drug, metformin, which basically works on the liver to help improve insulin sensitivity. And by doing that, they were able to improve the symptoms of treatment resistant bipolar disorder. Now, to me, that's pretty cool because you could see like, you know, nutrition and lifestyle affecting brain and body, but a drug that affects the liver. I mean, it's really, okay, it could have other effects. We have to admit that, but, but its main effect, its known effect is on the liver affecting insulin sensitivity and it can affect mitochondria too. But that in itself improves symptoms of bipolar disorder. So really brought together this mind-body connection that I think is so important that we need to emphasize more and more and more. And also brings up other things that improve insulin resistance, right? Most weight loss in general can improve insulin resistance, especially if it's healthy weight loss, losing mostly fat mass while maintaining lean mass. But a keto diet, low carb diets, resistance training, regular exercise, those are also very beneficial for insulin resistance. And we're starting to see lots of emerging evidence that they're beneficial for mental health disorders, specifically bipolar disorder. So that's the take home, lead with the take home. Now, if you wanna know more about the study, cause it is really interesting, let's get into it. So first it focused on treatment resistant bipolar disorder. So these are people who have been on multiple medications and the way they define it is there's no sustained remission after two separate eight week trials of medications, okay? And most, or the average number of medications that people were on at the inclusion of the study were two and a half. And the mean for failed medications was eight. They had tried and failed eight medications without remission of their symptoms, without improvement of their bipolar disorder. So these were not just your you know, routine, easy to treat bipolar disorder patients. They were difficult to treat, not responding to treatment. They were man randomized to either metformin or placebo. That's it, that was the only intervention, very simple. Um, they enrolled 50 patients, 39 completed. The average age was 49. Now this is what I think is interesting, 49, because the prevalence of bipolar disorder is much higher in the 18 to 25 range than it is in the 40 to 50 range. But because they also had to have insulin resistance, the population skewed older because those people who are in their 20s probably aren't manifesting insulin resistance yet. So that's kind of interesting, but I would love to see the same trial with people who are younger, even if they aren't manifesting typical insulin resistance um, signs. So the results, at 14 weeks, 50%, so half of the metformin group was no longer insulin resistant, whereas only one patient or 4% um, was no longer insulin resistant in the control group. And those who converted, so those who went from being insulin resistant to no longer insulin resistant, had much better improvement in the primary outcome, which was the depression rating score, right? So significant improvement in that score. And 81% of those who converted so were the ones who responded to treatment with at least a 30% benefit. Now, the, they, they set 30% as, as the benefit, but the others who didn't were like 28 and 21%, so they were still close but 81% of them had at least a 30% benefit. Um, whereas in the treatment group, only 39%, um, only 39% of the non-responders, right? So that was a little confusing, but basically it was clear that those who got the metformin 
and were no longer insulin resistant, they improved much better than even those who got the metformin and were still insulin resistant. So that makes it sound like, okay, it's not just the metformin, but it's the body's response to the metformin. It's, it's the adequately treating insulin resistance. So it doesn't prove that necessarily, that it's just insulin resistance by any means, but certainly suggests it. Also important findings, anxiety scores improved. Um, there was no increase in mania, which can sometimes happen if you treat depression, but that didn't happen. Um, and this is this is also important because for a lot of the medications that, that we use to treat bipolar disorder can, can stimulate or increase insulin resistance. Um, but if instead we're using lifestyle interventions and maybe even medications as in this trial to improve insulin resistance, to get rid of insulin resistance, convert them to being insulin sensitive, it makes sense that this mind-body connection is powerful and that can have an effect uh, on brain function, on mental health disorders. So I don't mean to belabor the point because like I said, we've had other videos on it, but I think it's so important to keep highlighting this and really talk about that mind-brain connection. So we don't see it as physical diseases and disorders over here and mental health disorders over here. It's all one and the same. Metabolic health is mental health, and we need to focus on that, all right? Uh, if this was helpful, please click thumbs up and subscribe, and you can check out dietdoctor.com for our educational guides on uh, ketogenic diet and mental health disorders. And of course, my podcast, The Diet Doctor Podcast, where I've interviewed a number of different people about mental health disorders. Um, and more of our videos here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. All right, take care, everybody. Thanks.